All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that is what 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says. Dear friend, the scripture presents the history of, of mankind through the divine spectrum. Through the pages of the Bible, we can see God educating His people and teaching them His grace and the plan He has prepared for their redemption. Today we are going to talk about that during lesson number 8, entitled Education and Redemption. I want to welcome you. My name is Rudy Vivanco, and today I, I want to invite you to the study of this lesson because we are going to be covering education and redemption, and that has to do with talking about the redemptive ed, um, education uh, and also Jesus as an educator. We are going to talk about the Bible as an educator. We will talk about uh, people, men as educators, and also the Holy Spirit. And I want you to stay all the way to the last part of this study because then we are going to study about the Holy Spirit as an educator. Remember to share this video. Remember to share this link. Remember to hit the like of this because many people could see this video in this way. So let's go. Let's pray and then we go into what the redemptive education is all about. Let's pray. Our dear Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege to open your, your holy book. We pray, Father, your blessing now. Let us hear your voice and let us follow your instructions is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, redemptive, redemptive education. What is this about? For that, we are going to go to Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1 says, In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. As you may know, Man is the only creature on this planet that was created in the image of God. That's what Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27 says. It's the only creature, none other like man, to carry the image of God. So, so the first couple, Adam and Eve, were, were to transmit this image to their children. However, because of sin, they begot their children in His likeness, in their likeness and not in the divine likeness. And there's a big problem right there. And Genesis chapter 5 and verse 3 uh, confirms this. Um, so gradually, gradually the image of God has been disfigured, distorted from generation to generation. The per and so the purpose of divine education is to restore in us the lost image of God through redemption. So that's why redemption is so important because redemption, what redemption is doing is not just rescuing us or saving us from the problem we brought upon ourselves, but also is, is uh, uncovering that covered image covered by hundreds and thousands of years of sin. So this, this plan of redemption, and this, this is where education comes in, this plan of redemption covers, covers from sin to the incarnation and the new creation and will continue to be our subject of study for eternity. And thus, it's important for us to understand what the plan of salvation is because as we understand it, we will be learning more and more and learning especially about the one that is to redeem us, the Redeemer. So this, this, is, this quote is taken from the book Education, page 15. I thought it was a very, a very uh, uh, nice quote that summarizes what redemptive, redemptive education is all about. Listen to what the, the inspired pen says on, on the book Education. The work of redemption was to restore in man the image of his maker. Confirming what the Bible says, right? Restore him to the perfection with which he had been created. Promote the development of body. This is what the work of redemption does. Mind and soul in order for the divine purpose to be carried out of its creation. This is the goal of education. And that's why we're talking about this now. The great purpose of life. So we, this is the, the redemptive, redemptive uh, ed ed education, right? Uh, the plan of redemption. Now, the plan of redemption was carried out 
especially by one who was considered a teacher or the teacher. This is Jesus and as an educator. Let's talk about this. Uh, this is based in John chapter 3 and verse 2. John 3 and verse 2. This is what the Bible says. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from come from God. So you know that in John chapter 3, Jesus has this personal encounter with a with an influential, powerful, and and, and uh, well-versed person. His name was Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a person that came to see Jesus. And here is the one who says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Now, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 9, is an amazing prophecy about the Messiah, this Messiah that Nicodemus came to see. In these verses, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, Jesus is presented as the educator who will have the spirit of wisdom, will have the spirit of counseling, will have the spirit of knowledge, will judge with, with justice, and will treat people with impartiality. The end result of, the, of, his, of Jesus' educational work will be that, quote, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God, end of quote. By the way, Nicodemus was, was one of the first ones to recognize Jesus as a teacher. He called Jesus Rabbi. During this conversation bet between Jesus and Nicodemus, Jesus indicated that his teaching, his teaching gift came from God. And this is found in John chapter 3 verses 11, through 11 and 12. Therefore, it is God who en enables each educator to carry out his work. This is important to see and this is important to accept because it's God who does the work. It's God who gives the, the, uh, the power. It's God who gives the information, the knowledge. It's God who gives the wisdom so that we may be able to be carriers of his grace. Okay, so we know about the redemptive, the redemptive uh, education, which is the message, right? We know about the messenger per, per excellence, which is, which is Jesus, the, 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 the great, the great uh, teacher. Now, we need a textbook, right? And so we need to talk about the Bible as an educator, the Bible as an educator. For that, we are going to go to Luke chapter 16 and verse 29. Luke chapter 16 and verse 29 says, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Now, Paul presented the Bible to, to, to Timothy as the educational book per excellence. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, useful, the Bible is useful to teach, to convict, to correct, to instruct in righteousness. Now, friend, each of its divisions, the Bible's divisions, has something to teach us. Each of them. Let, let's see what these divisions are. So the Bible, first of all, is divided into two main uh, parts that are called in the Bible testaments, right? The Old Testament and the, and the New Testament. I know you know about this, but uh, let's go along to see what uh, the divisions are, are good for because, uh, again, in the context of, of education. So, so the New Testament, the Old Testament, let's start with the Old Testament first. The Old Testament has um, five different divisions and each one of those divisions are there for, with a purpose. So the division number one is what is known as the Pentateuch, which is the five first, the five verse, uh, first books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is there to teach us how to live according to God's plan. And then the second division that we find in the Old Testament is, the, is what is known as the earthly, the early, excuse me, the early prophets. The early, early prophets now are, are there to teach us how, to, how Israel, God's chosen nation, put in practice this plan. And then we come to the, la the latter uh, prophets or the minor prophets, um, which are there to, to show us about their mistakes, uh, the Israelites' mistakes, and how to avoid them so that we don't go on the same road that they, they decided to go. And finally, in the Old Testament, we have what is known as the writings. The writings. And the writings are, are there to teach us those practical or show or show us those practical examples of education. The good and the bad, not only the good. Right? So those are the five 
uh, uh, five divisions of the Old Testament and why they are there that make that make all five of them make the Bible um, the educator or an educator uh, per excellence. And now we, we move to the New Testament, the second division uh, of the two main divisions of the Bible. The New Testament also has three different divisions. The first division is what is known as the history, history books. The history books are a dense educational material and, and also they show us how to share this, this material. And then we move to the general and the Pauline epistles. And epistles, you know, is non, non, nothing else than letters. Letters. So these general and, and Pauline letters, they are practical applications of that received education. And finally, we come to one book, which is the last book of the Bible, the last book of the New Testament as well. And that book is one division of the New Testament. And that is the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation simply is a glimpse of the educational development and its final, its final goal. Let me tell you, let me, let me summarize all these um, from a beautiful devotional. This, this devotional says, the Bible is the textbook and it should be studied diligently, not like any, any book is read, differently than them. It must be for us the book that satisfies the needs of the soul. This book will make wise for salvation to the man who studies and obeys it. That's what the, the, this beautiful quote just summarizes why the Bible is an educator per excellence, right? And of course, we have the message. We have the messenger, which is uh, Jesus, and we have the textbook, the Bible. And of course, there is now, there are also entities that are used, human entities that are used as edu educators. So we have to talk about human beings as educators, men as educators. And for this, we will go to Proverbs chapter 16, 16 and verse 23. Proverbs 16 and verse 23 says, The heart of the wise teaches, teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Now, we're talking about the wise, the wise. So, so this, this is very interesting because the Bible speaks of wise men, including Joseph, um, Aholiab, David, Ethan, Agur, Lemuel, Gamaliel, and Paul, and, and many others. All, all of these people lived responsibly and to benefit others. And that's, that's why I mentioned these names. But without a doubt, one of the most prominent is Solomon. Solomon. Now, Solomon is 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 uh, referred as the wise wise Solomon, and this is this is for a reason because this this Solomon he lectured on plants and animals, and composed proverbs and songs. His writings teach us how to apply knowledge in a practical way. That is how to be wise according to the Bible. Solomon urges us. To, at, to attain wisdom and use it to educate others. In this way, we become channels through which, which God can instruct His people. And this is found also, a uh, uh, confirmation of this is found in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 9 and verses 9 and 10. Proverbs 9, uh, 9 and 10. But, but I want you to hear this part, friends, again, because, because the moment God instructs you, the moment God gives you information and knowledge, that moment He also invites you to be a channel of His mercy, a channel of His knowledge, a channel of His plan of, of redemption. And now we come into the last, the last part, the part that I was saying you have to hold till this point so that you can hear this. We are going to talk about now um, about the Holy Spirit as educator. The Holy Spirit as educator. For that, we will go to John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14 and verse 26. Look what the Bible says in John 14 and 26. But the Helper, Jesus is speaking, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to, among other functions, continue His educational work. He, the Holy Spirit, guides us into all truth and teaches us what to say, when to say, it, and how to say it. 
According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, his education does not come from, quote, from human wisdom, but from the power of God, end of quote, and does not use, quote again, the wisdom of this world, but rather, rather exposes the mystery of the wisdom of God. This is what 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 5 through 7 say about the Holy Spirit and His work in us as the educator. Now, through the Holy Spirit, we can even study the depths of God. And this is what 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 and verse 10 says. We can imagine, friends, we can study the depths of God. What is that like? Just imagine how deep this story will be uh, and how much access to learning will there be for those who are led by the Holy Spirit. So, so you have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to guide you so that you will have that information that will get you to understand the creator of this universe in a better way, in a greater way, in a salvific way. So let me take this again, a, a quote that would summarize this part. And this is from the book Fundamentals of Christian Education. Fundamentals of Christian Education says, and, and this, this message is for everyone, but especially for young people. So if you are younger, then this message is for you. It says, young people must be apprentices for the world to come. Perseverance in acquiring knowledge govern, governed by fear and love of God will give young people increased a strength for good in this life. And those who make the best of their opportunities for high achievement will carry them with them into the afterlife. They have sought and obtained what is imperishable. Friends, when we study the Bible, we get to hear the messages of the Master per excellence. And we, of course, we study the Bible, which is the, the textbook per excellence. We receive the message of the plan of redemption, and all this would make sense through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This has to do with the education, because the best education is when knowledge comes to our minds, and that knowledge get us, gets us closer to our Creator, to our uh, Savior, and to our Redeemer. So I want to invite you, friend, to study your Bible, to study this book, to spend more time in this book so that you may hear that message, the plan of salvation, from the messenger, Jesus Christ, through the guidance, the Holy Spirit, and so that when you come to realize how good and how merciful your God is, you will give your heart to Him. Now, friend, I want to invite you to make this your daily life, that you may spend time with this book, and by spending time with this book, you may spend time with the author of the book. May the Lord bless you. And remember, share this video with everyone so that people will know there is a God and He, they, and he loves them and they need to know, know Him back and love Him back. We are going to pray, but remember to like also this video and share it with everyone. There are many more coming your way and I pray that they will be a blessing to you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we praise your name for giving us to, today the opportunity to, to study together. We have learned about how eager you are to rescue us, to bring us back to you. And I pray, Father, that this study has not answered necessarily all the questions we have, but just stirred up our minds, our brains, so that we may want to know more. And Father, true knowledge is the knowledge that brings us back to you. And so that's the knowledge that I'm praying for my, my friend who's listening this, the, to this video to acquire, to, to thirst for, that he and she will want to know more and more about you, more and more about your son, and study more and more your, your book, the Bible, and so that the Holy Spirit will have more opportunities to minister to them. I pray, Lord, your blessings upon them. I pray your blessings upon this study. And I pray, Lord, that you will continue being in our day today and for the rest of our lives till one day we meet with you in eternity. Thank you very much. We pray all these in the name of our Master, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, dear friend. See you next week.